Hey there everyone, so today we're going to put all of the evolutions into a competition to see which one is the best. I'll do these challenges kind of in pairs, that way we can see the generational differences starting with Gen 4's one and only Leafeon. Now, before I get into Leafeon's statistics, let me explain the rules of the challenge. First, we cannot use any other Pokemon in battle aside from Leafeon. Now, if we run into a doubles battle, there are some exceptions there. Two, we can catch other Pokemon for HM moves and anything else we may need. Three, no items in battle. So that means we can't use any sort of healing items or X items in battle because then this actually wouldn't be a challenge. However, hold items can be acceptable. Now, getting back to the challenge, Leafeon has some very interesting stats. Its HP is pretty lackluster at base 65. Its attack is incredible at base 110. It has spectacular defense at base 130. Its special attack is the worst stat at base 60, but thankfully we won't be using that at all. Its special defense is terrible at base 65, and its speed is pretty good at base 95. We're a tank for physical attacks, which is great, but if we can avoid being hit, that would be the best option. Its moveset is pretty good. We get Razor Leaf pretty early, which will probably be used a ton and might be a main staple for our moveset. Plus, we get pretty versatile moves that we can learn, so we could literally have access to a ground type move, dig, or even a steel type move in Iron Tail. And most importantly of all, we have access to the best setup move, Sword Stance. So we start off by replacing Turtwig and give our rival Chimchar, which will be the most difficult option for this challenge. We end up naming Leafeon Lefia because I thought it would be pretty cool to have the Japanese names in English. We have the Mild Nature, which increases our small special attack and lowers our monstrous defense. Right now, it looks like our attack will always be higher than our defense. It's got Leaf Guard as an ability, which prevents the Pokemon from having status conditions, but it's pretty much non-existent since we will probably never have Sunny Day available. The only move we have right now is Tackle. It should do great damage, but we can do better. Once we run a few errands, obtain the Pokedex and the Poketch, we can make our way to Route 203 where we encounter our first actual rival battle. We leveled up quite a bit since I wanted some speed investments, but at level 10 and with most early route Pokemon only knowing physical moves, he really didn't stand a chance against us. I know that having this good of physical attack this early on will make most of the early gameplay real quick. So before we get to Rorik, I just need to say that he's a rock type specialist and we're a grass type Pokemon. Our moves deal 4 times super effective damage to some of his Pokemon. I did think about battling him with only tackle at early levels, but I went against it. Mainly because at level 15, we learn Razor Leaf, which is a base 55 attack move with a high critical hit chance. At level 15, I tried the Rock Gym. With Razor Leaf, it went just as you'd expect. Geodude, Onyx, and even Cranidos didn't stand a chance against Razor Leaf. We didn't take any damage, thankfully. Winning this battle means that we obtained our first gym badge. Once we return to Jubilife City, deal with some thugs, get to Floroma Town, and eventually the Valley Windworks, we can battle against Commander Mars. In hindsight, I probably should have taught him return for the added damage compared to Tackle just for Pokemon like Zubat who quad resist our grass type moves, but we managed. Pyrogly is where things almost went bad for us. We managed to get the win with just 1 HP remaining. If we make our way through Eterna Forest, we can make it to Eterna City where we can take on the grass gym leader, Gardenia. We did teach Leafia return for the added damage, which helps us a lot, but her Pokemon set up a reflect having our physical damage output. You can see that we go from two-shotting her Pokemon to having to deal multiple hits in a row. Eventually, it does wear off, but then she sends out her ace immediately after her first Pokemon. I'm not sure why they do that sometimes. Maybe it's because the AI knows that it has a type advantage over ours. Remember when I said that Leaf Guard was pretty terrible? It might have played an important part in our victory because she kept missing status moves. In the Galactic Tower, we can go up against Commander Jupiter. This battle just kind of proves how typing may just be everything in Pokemon. With Return, we can never get the full advantage of this move if we're anything but normal type. See, the same type attack bonus, or stab for short, you get a 50% increase in a move's power if you're the same type. We probably don't have our friendship maxed out yet, which could have played a role in why it took us so much time to defeat her Pokemon. By the time we get to the third gym, we haven't really leveled up much. And if you've seen any of my previous runs, you know that this gym is the one in which we have the most difficulty. Although we're pretty powerful with our physical attacks, it's kind of aggravating to see when it just doesn't go our way. Most of these gym leaders ace pokemons have a citrus berry to heal their pokemon up by at least a quarter HP. This ended up going against us, but then again we don't really have an answer for Haunter. Let's run that back. On our second try, Duskull goes for a future sight which doesn't affect us for two turns and then gets knocked out by two razor leaves. 
Miss Magius comes out and we get a much needed Razor Leaf critical hit knocking it not quite to 0 HP but it activates the Citrus Berry bypassing the healing percentage which means that we get a 2 turn knockout on it. We've sustained a bit of damage and now we're up against Haunter which resists our grass type moves because of its poison typing. After tanking a Shadow Claw and a Sucker Punch, Fantina opts to heal Haunter and this looks pretty bad but by a stroke of luck on the following turn we get a critical hit winning us the battle on our second try. Just outside of Heart Home City, we can battle our rival in a small building. This time, his team is pretty well rounded. The only issue I had was when Staravia's ability Intimidate lowered our attack by one stage, which ultimately cost us the entire battle. It tried to get some evasiveness up, but we bypassed its boost. That wasn't the only issue. It's when Monferno comes out. This is where I need all the attack power I can get. It gets a crit off on us and then knocks us out with a priority mock punch. Now if we could just be a couple of levels higher then we shouldn't have a problem. To be honest, I don't remember the last time I saved, and... Uh oh. Well, after beating Fantina again and gaining a couple of levels, we go for the rival battle again. We do pretty well considering I tried to get some chip damage with Razor's Leaf at first with Staravia, but we knock it out. Monferno went a little bit better. It tried lowering our defense, but we still end up living through a flame wheel, and shortly thereafter, knocking it out with a return. And after that, I felt like it was going to be much more challenging, but we did just learn synthesis, so we end up healing a majority of our health. His two other Pokemon are more or less unable to deal damage to Leafeon, so we ultimately get the dub. I think that later on down the road, especially when he has more of a developed team, we're going to end up with a lot of problems. Velstone City Gym is next on our list. Here, we gain access to the TM for Dig, and in the game corner, we can trade in coins for our coveted sports dance. So Dig is a 2 turn ground type attack. This move is perfect against the steel type Pokemon like Lucario, but what's even better for a physical attacker like Leafeon is Sword Stance. Sword Stance increases our attack by 2 stages, basically doubling our attack in one move. We actually lost one time against Maylene before I got these because I wanted to see just how well we could do, but we lost. On our second attempt, we actually have these moves. It takes just one Sword Stance and a bit of luck, but we knock out the Metatite with a Razor Leaf, Lucario with a Dig, and Machoke takes two Razor Leafs to defeat. We are now up to four badges. After this battle, we can make our way over to Pastoria City where we can run into another rival battle. This time, even with Staravia having Intimidate, we can just as easily buff our attack stat negating the effect that it previously had. Staravia did boost its evasiveness, but with a bit of RNG luck, we can manage to get by and knock it out. We have a better answer to Monferno than before. Now we can use Dig to hit for a super effective damage. And the rest of the team goes by pretty much the same. It's almost as if Leafeon is an unstoppable force at this point. Now I don't have a whole lot to say about Leader Wake because he uses water type Pokemon. And what are we? We're grass type, so most of his Pokemon are two times a week against our grass typing. I say some because he does have a Gyarados that lowers our attack. Even with our attack up two and a half stages, Gyarados doesn't go down easily. Thankfully, even with healing, it doesn't take us any time at all to dispatch of him. His second Pokemon, Floatzel, is usually pretty fast, but we outspeed and knock it out in one attack. Last is Quagsire. Our Razor Leaf isn't always perfect since it does have a 5% chance of missing, but Quagsire doesn't have enough potential to knock us out. This defeat right here earns us our 5th Gym Badge. So after chasing the Galactic Grunt, getting the Secret Potion from Cynthia, healing the Psyduck on Route 210, and getting to Celestic Town, we run into Cyrus. So we're level 39, and although we can kind of set up against the Sneasel here, we run into a major issue. Golbat quad resists our Razor Leaf, and I'm not entirely sure what I can use against it considering we have a pretty mediocre moveset on our Leafeon. Against our best efforts, we go down here because I don't really have a good move. We didn't quite knock out the gold bat, but then again, I feel like I can change the moveset here. Or so you would think. After a couple more attempts, I leveled up Leafia to level 42. On turn 1, we go for Sword Stance and we take some damage from Slash. Turn 2, we use Sword Stance again and Sneasel lands a crit. On turn 3, we set up the final Sword Stance as Sneasel gets us to half health. We end up healing ourselves with Synthesis, and while we do take a bit of damage, we can start sweeping his Pokemon. You might be asking, Spear Bomb, why don't you teach other moves? Well, to be honest, I wasn't sure what move I could use, and I'm trying to keep these times as low as possible, but in the long run, it might have gone against us. Anyhow, we can move on from Celestic Town to Candlelight City, where, surprise surprise, we run into our rival here. Well, since we're at a much higher level, that means that when Intimidate activates, it drops our attack stat much lower than usual. 
So Sword Stance will definitely play a key factor into our success. But for whatever reason, the AI decides not to attack with Staraptor, and instead he goes for multiple double teams. Eventually, he does go for attacks, but we see through his Shadow Clone Jutsu and obliterate it. What makes this battle so difficult is the fact that his entire team, aside from Floatzel, resists my grass typing. And this team just gets bulkier the more that we progress through the story. However, we are stubborn and willing to go through with sheer will and determination. And we eventually do get to win this battle no matter what happens. And this is consistent since we battled him three times since I kept forgetting to save and we lost against the trainer way into the future, not once, but twice. After we go back to the Pokemon Center to heal, we can make our way all the way to Byron. See, Byron is a Steel-type user, and while Steel-types do resist Grass-typing, we have Dig on our side, and we'll probably keep having it on our moveset for a while. We go for the turn 1 Dig against Magneton because it likes to paralyze our Pokemon, and it's an easy one-shot. Second is Steelix. He has much higher defense, so this may not be as easy, so we start to set up. Eventually, we land the finishing blow. The last is Bastiodon, and if you've seen False White Gaming Channel's video about defense, it's not exactly everything as we easily knock it out and win us our 6th gym badge. In the next event of the game, there are several explosions that happen where we need to go to the Three Lakes and see about saving the Legendary Trio. However, we're too late to stop most of them, and I'm going to save us some time here since these battles are somewhat similar, and if you've seen one, you've seen what I'm talking about. You've really seen them all. Once we go to Lake Valor and then Lake Verity, we can head up north from Route 216 and 17 and get to Snowpoint City. This gym is super scary for us, mainly in part because they can easily knock us out with their ice type moves, but let's go ahead and see how we fare against Candace. We're pretty well over leveled at this time, mainly because I'm stubborn when it comes to changing my movesets, but because we just gained so much experience from going to one place to another. My only solution at this time was to set up against the Sneasel. Thankfully, we were faster than all of her Pokemon and we managed to get the first try victory against Candace. I think we can give thanks to reteaching Return to Leafia that we were able to get this far. Up until this point, we've only been to two lakes. If we head back to Route 217 and use Rock Climb on the wall, we can enter Lake Acuity where the rival has been beaten. Since we have seven badges, it's time to conclude Team Galactic's storyline. We return to Velstone City where we rampage through the entire building until we get to Cyrus. We kind of struggle against him, and I'm going to skip over this battle because not a whole lot changes from here and to where we battle him at the end. There's also another commander battle here, but it's literally the same as the others. But we do end up saving the Lake Trio, so that's a plus. Now that Team Galactic has made its way to the top of Mount Coronet, we can enter into a double battle with Ice against Commanders Jupiter and Mars. Honestly, this battle goes in the right direction. We go for Razor Leaf at first, only to see how much damage we could do, and then they set up dual screens, so we need to start setting up. The only issue here would be if we got confused, but they never really go for that. Once we get maxed out, we knock both Bronzer out with the Razor Leaf. The next Pokemon I'm worried about is Skuntank, since it's a Poison type, so we go for Dig and wipe it out. Once Golbat gets sent out, it's kind of a clean sweep from here. We use Return on the Golbat, then focus on Pure Ugly and the Golbat after that to win on our first try. Once we defeat the Commanders, Cyrus opens up a portal and then Giratina traps him in the Distortion World. It literally takes me 15 to 20 minutes to navigate through this area, even at 4 times speed. Well, that's just me complaining, let's get right into the battle with Cyrus. I kid you not, this battle was probably worse than when I battled against the Elite Four, and I'll show you why. So on turn 1, we have to go for Dig, because even though we're 11 levels higher, it has the potential to knock us out or knock us down real low. Next is Crobat. We go for a return and thankfully it knocks it out. Hunch Crow is next and this is where we lose the battle. It manages to hang on after a powerful return and hits us to knock us out. This happened several times, if only we had a better solution. Finally, after 7 attempts, I get this attempt where I level up once more. I still go for the turn 1 dig and even set up against the Crobat. I use the Person Berry to mitigate the chance that we hit ourselves in confusion. And after 1 Source Dance, we get the chance to sweep the Crobat, the Haunch Crow, and while we do get faked out by the Weavile, we outspeed and land a devastating return. Gyarados is his last Pokemon, and while it is a 2 hit knockout against it, we need not worry because we have officially cleared the Team Galactic story. That was an incredibly tough battle, and I don't think I would have gotten through it if I had just stuck with my moveset where I didn't have return, and changing out the Petra to the Personberry made a world of difference. We finally made it to Sunny Shore City where Flint, an Elite Four member, asks us to instill the Will of Fire into the gym leader here because he's all burnt out into cinders. 
but since he's an electric type user, maybe the correct wording should be that he shorted out. Well, maybe we can just ground him to make sure that he doesn't shock anyone when we generate sparks from this battle. So Volkner sends out Leafeon's brother, Jolteon. I went to set up with Sword Stance to ensure each KO, and Jolteon did paralyze us, but I had the Cherry Berry equipped, so it was like a free setup. I go for a turn and knock it out. Next is Raichu, and I opt for Razor Leaf, because even though it is a physical move, it doesn't make contact, which could cause me to be paralyzed thanks to the ability Static. But from here on out, we easily one or even two shot his Pokemon. We've really come a long way since our first battle, and now it's time to battle our rival for the last time. As usual, his Star Raptor cuts our attack by one stage, so we have to immediately set up. I think two Sword Stances were enough, and it was, as you can see, we were able to knock out the Star Raptor, but we took a substantial amount of damage before we can move on to the next Pokemon, which happens to be Heracross. But thankfully, we were able to deal enough damage to sweep it with a Return, and at this point, I think Return just does the most amount of damage compared to Razor Leaf, even with Stab. Anyways, third is Infernape. We easily knock it out with Dig. Now, Floatzel and Rosary don't really matter, but what does matter is the Snorlax considering how tanky it is. But we get a high crit chance, and we win the battle, which means that we can enter the last 5 battles before we clear this challenge. I went ahead and leveled up a few more times before we started the battles, because I know that going against Eren and then having to go up against Flint means that we will more than likely struggle at our current level, especially if we have terrible special defense. So first up is Eren. He's a bug type specialist. He sends out Yenmega the bug in flying type. I go for a sword stance like usual, but he goes for a double team and gets a speed boost, thanks to his ability. But on turn 2, we thankfully hit it to knock it out. Next is Vespiquen. This thing is pretty bulky in its own right, but not bulky enough to tank a boosted return. Scissor, on the other hand, does resist two of our attacks, so we use Dig only to get it to maybe 1 HP, and then we tank a massive X Scissor that leaves us in the red. The next turn, Scissor gets healed as we land the Colossal Return. I should have just used this move instead. We take it down on the following turn. Subsequently, he sends out Heracross. It doesn't really have the bulk to survive a plus 2 attack boosted return, and we are finally on his last Pokemon, Drabion. Surprisingly, it's not a bug type, but a dark and poison type. So naturally, we use Dig against it to get us the first dub for our Elite 4 challenge. The next Elite 4 member is Bertha. She mainly uses ground types, but we are leagues ahead of her with our grass typing, so it doesn't really matter what she does. We just swept the entire team with a Razor Leaf, and this is totally consistent with anything we do against her. Gliscor did manage to get a little bit of damage, but it was nothing to worry about. We're two-fifths of the way through with this challenge, but this is where things become interesting. We have to go against Flint, the Fire-type Specialist. At level 66, we attempted for the first time to see where this goes. With all of our experience, this goes a lot better than what you may think. On turn 1, against the Houndoom, we go for Dig and it gets taken down. If I had done anything else, we more than likely would have either gotten burned or knocked out. Anyways, Leafeon's other brother, Flareon, is out next. And this is going to be the same strategy. We do get a crit, but I don't think it mattered. Rapidash is third, and we actually outspeed it to go underground as it sets up a sunny day. But like the other Pokemon, it too goes down and we level up. I guess he sees a potential knockout with Magmortar, so he sends it out next. And once again, we manage to take it down on the following turn with Dig. Last is Infernape, and it's the same song and dance, but it lands a gut-wrenching Flare Blitz. But it's not strong enough to knock us out, and it goes down thanks to the recoil. I can't believe that we won against Flint on our first attempt. Let's move on to Lucian, the Psychic Specialist. The Psychic Pokemon are notoriously known for their high special attack and low defense, so this may go in our favor. He starts off with Mr. Mime, and since I know he has a Bronzong in the back, I'm going to go ahead and just start setting up here. I could have just attacked here, but seeing how Mr. Mime went for Light Screen instead of Reflect, we continued to set up. And now he goes for the Reflect. After 3 Swords Dance, I feel like we can take on anything. We take down the Mr. Mime and even the Espeon in one hit, but Bronzong is another story. It tanks one of our Razor Leaves. I was actually trying to go for a crit, but at this point, Reflect has run out and our plus 6 attacks can start cutting through the competition. I was scared of Bronzong, but it looks like I didn't really need to have any fear as the Alakazam and Gallade fall to the Mighty Leaf. You know what? Let's jump straight into the final battle. Spiritomb may be the most frustrating Pokemon she has. Not only does it not have a weakness, it's super bulky as well. We definitely need to set up against it, so we do just that as it tries to get the 10% chance to get the Omni Boost. And after getting to plus 4 in attack and sustaining a ton of damage, we can start clearing her Pokemon. The Spiritomb goes down to a Mighty Razor Leaf. Then she sends out Togekiss, but that thing goes down to a powerful return. 
Roserade is third, and while it is powerful, it's literally just a glass cannon, so we shatter it with our strength. Garchomp is fourth, and in this generation, it has Sand Veil instead of Rough Skin, but even so, we take it out with a return. We leveled up to level 69. Hey, that's pretty good. She's running out of options as she sends out Milotic, but it also goes down to a super effective Razor Leaf. And last is Lucario. We go for one final dig as it misses Aura Sphere, and on the following turn, we have claimed victory over Cynthia, and at a perfect level too. Beating this challenge at level 69, nice, feels alright. It's going to be hard to contend against something like that for all the other evolutions. I'm just curious as to what level Glaceon will finish this in. I have to say that I love using Leafeon. I just wish that it was more competitively viable because it's incredibly powerful if given the opportunity to shine. I feel like I could have played better and I'll start planning after the next video a little more carefully that way I don't struggle as much. Well, if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you for watching. I plan on releasing the Glaceon run as early as possible, but I'm going to try and work on the scripts before I start editing the videos. That way you guys can have two videos in a row. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps us out with the algorithm. I'll catch you guys in the next one.